Welcome. In this video, I show you how we can build a heat chart in Blazor. First, I start here in the weather forecast service. By default, we are only getting returned the next five weather forecasts for the next five days. I'm going to change it to 35 so that we at least get the next month. Now, I'm going into the host razor page. Here I'm going to delete the reference to the default styling and here I'm just going to give it the property with value display none because otherwise the error section would be displayed. Now here in the index is where we are going to build the heat map so that I don't forget it. I'm going to inject the weather forecast service. Now I do the styling. The body has a margin of zero, otherwise we would have the, the scroll bars. Font family is Helvetic. Now I'm going to wrap everything in this container. The height of the whole screen, display grid, and now I specify the columns to one fraction and five fractions so that we have an aside section and a main section. The main section uh, will also have display property grid. Here I'm going to say we have five columns and rows we have seven because we have seven weekdays and we want to have them all in one, one column. Now, first I also define the aside, the aside also display grid. And now again, yes, exactly here. It's the same story as here we have seven rows because we have seven weekdays. Now, first class container, and then here the aside. Here I'm going to create the seven sections. Uh, Monday. Now you could do everything also with Flexbox. But I'm so used to using grid that I use grid for everything. Even if it's uh, something that is uh, horizontally or vertically aligned without sections, I'm using grid instead of flexbox. But of course, you can do it however you want. Now here it's the side and here is the main. And because I've specified in the container grid template columns, one FR, five FR, this here will take one fraction. And now this here will take five fraction of the uh, horizontal length of the, of the width of the whole uh, viewport. Now here in this main, well, first of all, I'm defining the code section here a list of weather forecasts because we want to display them in the heat chart. Now I'm going to import this namespace here so that we don't have to specify it all the time. Okay, quick save. Now call it forecasts, protected override, initialized async. I have to take the asynchronous version of the initialized method, or I have to override the asynchronous version of the initialized method because the service get forecast async method is asynchronous. Now here I have to pass the daytime from which I want the, the weather forecast to start. And then here I call to list. That's why I have enclosed everything here in brackets so that this expression here evaluates to an I enumerable, and on the I enumerable, I can call to list. So that's that. 
Now here I'm going to enumerate over all, no, I want the for each, over all the forecasts in forecasts, display them in a section. Now the most tricky thing about the whole thing, which is not that tricky at all, is somehow I have to generate the background color so that we have a real heat map. Now, how, how am I going to do this? I am going to use the switch expression that I think came into C sharp in the version eight. In here, I am going to receive temperature stored as in a decimal. Now the switch expression, we first here have the, the variable, then we call switch on it. Now we say, if it is bigger or equal zero, then we are going to return a string that is going to represent the, the color. In this case, if it's bigger than well, uh, zero Celsius, it's red because yeah, that's, that symbolizes the uh, yeah, hot temperatures. Now here I have to, so now here I have to calculate the opacity. How am I going to do this? I am going to say temp divided by 55 because that's the max, uh, that's the max that, uh, That's the boss, that's the, that's the highest uh, possible calculated uh, temperature. So we see here minus 20 until 55. So I'm just going to divide it uh, with 55 and that's it. And here I'm going to say if it's uh, smaller than zero, I am going to also return a string of course, but in this case, uh, it is going to be blue. The rest will be the, the same. So the RGBA for blue or RGB for blue is 30. Uh, I'm not going, I'm using the deep sky blue. And here I'm doing the same thing, just divided by 20. Yes, it's 20 but I have to take the, the absolute version of it. So math, absolute temperature, and then divide it by 20. And here, what is happening here? Oh, no semicolon. So that's our switch expression. As I mentioned, I think it was introduced in C-sharp 8. Now here I can just call color calculate and pass it our temperature. Now the temperature comes in as an integer, but because we here want to have, uh, if we would pass an integer here, it would be always zero because it would like around the thing, but we want to have the real value. So I have to calculate uh, with a decimal. Now here I'm going to display the item, uh, first the date, too short date string, and then I'm also going to display the temperature in Celsius. Now I have also to style the section. The section will be, will have a border on the right hand side, a three pixel solid black. And also on the bottom one, again, three pixel solid black. And then we will also, again, say display grid, justify content center, align content center so that we have everything centered. And then let's just also center the the paragraph elements also create justify content center and align content center. So let's have a look. Oh, 
Okay, I've com I completely forgot to delete here in the main layout the, the nav menu and stuff. In this application, we only want to see the heat map. And as you have seen in the video, the video wasn't that much about Blazor. It was more also about uh, web development. Now, yeah, we see here the heat map, the cold temperatures minus, they are blue. And the colder we get, the bluer we get. And the same is also true in the opposite direction. The, the hotter the temperature, the hotter it gets here. Now, if I load the application, you see like a bit of a, of a flickering. So this is because we are rendering rendering it actually two times so because we have here the server pre-rendered mode i change it to server if you are in the server pre-rendered mode it's getting rendered on the server and then it's getting rendered again when the websockets connection is established between client and server and in this case it's only getting rendered once when the websockets connection has already been established so yeah we see it is it works as expected without the flickering uh, thank you very much for your attention.